can I just honor or kick up? Now you can uh, state your name and address to just talk about it. Okay, good morning. Uh, my name is Apart Michelle. I'm uh, part of the Port Cayman neighborhood. I've been there for about four years now at this point. Uh, came in 2016. And uh, we've been there long enough to know all the different construction that has gone on in the last four years, which is still going on at this point. And I think at that time there were, let's say, 55 some homes built. Now they're about 72, 75 at the moment. So, again, I think similar to what maybe the others we've already stated, we have, we have a lot of kids in the neighborhood. There are a lot of young kids at this point that are anywhere from 5 to 15 years. The COVID-19 has done nothing but make them get out much more regularly than you would expect with biking and walking and everything else. So that's probably one of the bigger concerns that I think everybody in the neighborhood has, is to, from a security perspective. We only have one entrance coming in. It's not wide enough to begin with as it is when there's two cars going down, especially when there's construction equipment coming in. It makes it even more more dangerous just for, for anybody to pass through. So that's probably one of the biggest things that, that we want to we just highlight here as, as a community. And again, I think some of the emails have already come out indicating that. Uh, and again, we, we understand that the, the land is obviously a good land and it could be built upon from a, for, for good houses to be comparable to, to what we're at at the moment. So again, we, we expect that that's, that's going to be there, but I want to make sure again, that our purpose is at least understood at that point. So. My address, sorry, at 7703 Briar and Drive. Thank you. Thank you very much. construction entrance coming in off the farm road and that's a great idea for those that don't live over where I live so just consideration for that if there is talk of a construction entrance um, and if there's any consideration to talk to Duke Energy or Duke Power about bringing an entrance in from the other side would be uh, a nice consideration you know part of the reason we moved into the neighborhood was the ability to get out and ride bikes and walk and run which has been a nice part of uh, living in that neighborhood. Now we're talking about adding a potential, you know, another 30 homes, which is going to add, I would guess, a minimum of another 60 cars to the neighborhood if we've got uh, two vehicles per house. So that's just what I wanted to express, the, the safety of uh, those that like to get out and be a part of the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Infrastructure 
before you do, do anything. Uh, next thing, infrastructure. Uh, I mean, it's going to be good revenue for the for the county and all that, and that's good. But as far as using this single entrance for the next four years without any uh, any issues, is going to be a big deal. So find an entrance from 150, at least during the construction phase, and then when then the construction is done, maybe open it up. And I think that's a that's a reasonable request from people who are already living here. Thanks. Thank you.
where the, where the blame lies, <clears throat> excuse me, where the blame lies is not on one person or group. I'm not trying to blame. But this needs to be done in a sustainable way, not just with this piece of land, but on many. Otherwise, this will leave Somerville with nothing more than just rows of big houses, destroying what made it a desirable place to live with. All who handle or decide what is done by, with land by nature have an obligation to consider both the intrinsic and extrinsic value of what it is, not just the monetary value. It is not empty as, a, as it is. It is alive, full of residents already. Such homes and habitats are already fragmented without restraint construction. Nothing will be left. This is a high duty to consider, a truly moral duty, and it affects us all. I beg you to make moves to do the right thing. We should not, no, cannot stand by and let this continue as it has. Oh, all right. <laughs> Final submit is not too late. Thank you, Gail Dunn. Public comment 622-2020. General public comments for the 622 meeting. The purpose of a legislative public hearing is to obtain public input on important legislative policy matters. Oh wait, I'm not time this one. <laughs> The purpose of a legislative public hearing is to obtain public input on important legislative policy matters that affect a wide range of citizens, such as comprehensive land use plans or the annual budget. A public hearing may be a formal meeting for receiving testimony from the public at large on a local issue or proposed government action. Testimony from both sides of an issue is usually reported for public record and reports summarizing the key points is generated. I personally object to the process of the Zoning Board on Monday, June 22, 2020, and it is difficult to present public comments without full knowledge of the plan. For the town information, public comments should be sent to Town Hall via electronic means before, by 12 noon on June 22, 2020. Requiring public comments before the zoning presentation and important information is presented does not appear to satisfy the information available for a public hearing. A virtual meeting for public hearing could use technology readily available today, such as Zoom, for interactive participation. The taxpayers of Summerfield are paying for Wi-Fi at the community center, and it appears this basic technology could be available to the public for their comments and the robotic comments part of the public hearing process. The taxpayers are also paying thousands of dollars a year for town technology, contracts, and equipment. I think a priority should be to provide the best communication possible for an important meeting such as public hearing. I sincerely wish that a full public hearing would be part of this process. The Town of Stonefield process only allows public comments and questions at this rezoning hearing. The details and important site plan approval meetings are not noticed to those in the immediate area. I think citizens may wait outside for an hour or two and possibly call in one at a time and then leave the building, but that has not been affected for the town meetings since March. Gail Dunham and it is her contact information. Her address is 5805 Snow Hill Drive, Summerfield, North Carolina. One more? Yes, ma'am. All right, let's see. Okay. I'm looking for a name. Oh, okay. Apologies. There's a bunch of them. If possible, we have had two other homes request to have their signatures added to this email, bringing the count up to 31. They are Nate and Julie Jorgensen, 7710 Briarden Drive, Missy Jackson. 7709 Briarden Drive. And this is and here is the um, oh, okay. Here's the here's the comment. As an invested group of neighbors in the Burkhaven development, we feel the need to express our apprehension with the potential rezoning of 3016 Rear Oak Ridge Road from AG to RS40. Burkhaven is a neighborhood with only one road allowing for ingress and egress. 
The burden of 30 or more additional homes will likely cause undue strain on our neighborhood infrastructure. Additionally, having only one means of entry presents the distinct potential for access limitations by emergency vehicles in the event of a road blockage due to fire, motor vehicle accident, or other incident that renders the road inaccessible. Furthermore, the property in question has an electrical power line right of way that bisects it running north to south. We were worried that the presence of this component, if made more visible through development, will create a less desirable pricing environment for both the new and existing neighborhoods. Homes close to the lines will likely be valued at a reduced amount, potentially resulting in a negative impact to existing home values as well. Thank you for your attention to this matter and for allowing an opportunity to voice our concerns. Respectfully, 29 homes from the Burkhaven neighborhood, including the two that I already read. Do you want, Lance, do you, do you want me to read these names? Uh, it's not necessary. I got it. All right. So there are 31 signatories to this particular email. And that's that. Thank you, Mr. Thank you for reading those. All right, we're going to close the public comment portion of this. One question before the developer comes back. How do we, the people that are still here, here to see that? Are we going to give them that opportunity? Is there any comments? They just did, didn't they? No, no, the ones that are outside. Isn't that a game and focus? Yeah, but he's going to make comments on his own, and I don't know if he oh. would be addressing some of their concerns. Oh, All okay. Right. Our, our, our process tonight only allows for uh, the comments that were presented by email and in person, and there were, you can have the, any discussion that you want related to the rezoning, and then uh, everything is being streamed. There will be minutes, but there's not a separate opportunity for engagement tonight with you. So we can come back and listen. Okay, let me try. But they can watch it on Facebook, right? Live. Well, yeah, but they can see that. It's recorded, so it's available for later. Okay. All right, I'll ask any questions you have on this. Okay, then we're going to ask the developer to come back and if he has any comments regarding what he heard or either written or no, thank you. Thank you for your time again. Um, you know, I was born and raised in Gifford County. I went to Lawson, went to Summerfield, graduated from Northwest. We were tobacco farmers in the 80s. Uh, my grandfather owned over 400 acres near Northern School District. We stopped tobacco farming in the 80s and we started building houses and land development. It's, you know, I understand the concerns of people here. I, I, I get it. This traffic. Um, we live off Cedar Hollow Road. We developed 400 some acres off of Sierra Hollywood. We started with just three houses down that street. Now we're over 300, um, close to 350 when we're, when we're all said and done. So um, I understand it, but it's, I hate to say it, but it's part of progress. It is what it is. We, we, you can't tobacco farm anymore, so what else do you do with the land? So we started developing um, and building homes. Um, similar issue here, it's AG. Realistically, there's no really use for agriculture in this situation here. So one of the things that we're trying to do is turn it into residential to mimic what is currently in Berkeley. Um, we try to be good neighbors. We try to take care of construction traffic. It's tough. You build the streets, you got heavy machinery coming in. But we clean the streets, we keep the dirt off, we do all this other stuff. Plus there's a road control that's out there. So um, most of the concerns that I heard tonight were more site plan lot type issues which we will address as we go forward. I've had several meetings with the HOA, uh, with the board. Uh, once again, we try to be good neighbors. We try to reach out to get their input. I realize that we won't make everybody happy and I realize that a lot of folks that that uh, when they move into a neighborhood, that neighborhood had to be built for them to move into it. So it becomes, you know, not in my backyard type situation. Once again, I completely understand. Uh, but having said that, when you look at a rezoning point of view, there's really limited AG to RS40. Um, pretty much, it's really our, our, our only choice for lack of a better term. So, um, any other questions? Or, you know, when they talk about, not to get into the site plan here, but when you talk about life safety, um, if you
you look at lot six there, there's an example. It's right there in the middle. And then you look at the existing lot that's just east of that right there. The difference between a fire truck or an ambulance going from that lot to that lot is roughly about 600 feet. So you're talking 600 feet at 30 miles an hour plus or minus 5 seconds, plus or minus maybe 10. So the issue that a lot of the, that, that is raised uh, are existing problems in Berkeley or existing issues in Berkeley. So, if, you know, in my humble opinion by adding what we're doing here and having the, the access there to get there, you're not really talking about incrementally uh, a, a, a significant amount of time when it comes to uh, fire safety and ambulances and things like that. So, uh, you know, if, uh, the, the main entrance is DOT maintained. It's turned over to the state. Actually, most of these roads are state maintained now. So that's something that, you know, a lot of these, the, the maintenance and the, and the wear and tear will be handled by uh, state DOT. Um, so, but, yeah, in theory, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, um, once again, I don't want to get too much into the cycle lane because we're just focusing on rezoning, but, uh, you, know, uh, you know, I'm just trying to address some of their concerns when you look at the, a lot of things that are out there. So. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no. I was just going to say, bring to your attention, when, uh, when the conditions are right for that, you'll definitely have a chance to take some big bites out of that apple and have that discussion to make sure that if it goes down that road, what do we bring in to help um, to help everybody, to help the public safety and welfare? What can we do on that point? Um, what's the limits of what we can ask for? And uh, things that are reasonably related to this project, but that will be part of that subdivision application, assuming um, the zone changes. So, so one comment, one of the present speakers had made a statement about a construction entrance. I don't know if that's something they've heard from you or is there any thought given to that? No, absolutely. One of the things that once we get further along in this process, um, when we make it into the into the site plan and sketch plan type discussions, one of the things I would like to do is, is reach out to the to the neighbor there because there is a farm road that runs basically where the pointer is, right through that area that's there that was used. Um, this this property, I think, was timbered in the late 90s, I think, and they used that as an entrance to 150. So one of the things that I uh, suggested to the HOA that I'd be willing to at least reach out to that homeowner or that landowner try to make some arrangement to have a temporary easement so that a lot of the construction traffic would go out uh, through, through 150. So, you know, once again, it's up to him giving me approval, but, uh, you know, it's at least worth asking and trying to do um, you know, reach out so that we, we can try to limit the amount of, uh, you know, construction traffic the best we can. When someone gives an easement like that, are they typically compensated for it? Uh, potentially, yeah. Right. In other words, I would have to purchase it and or maintain it. Um, you know, sometimes what they'll do in return is I have to put gravel down on or I have to maintain it or do something like that, and that's their uh, payment. Um, you know, in lieu of extra money, I, 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 it, for the most part, it's got a nice gravel bed, but 